Well, time to have a go at a larger painting again, a 40, 30, um, of a rather complicated street scene here. And again, we'll take it with the jigsaw method. The drawing is the most important thing to get all the shapes worked out and then just work up shape by shape by shape, putting a colour on, and where that colour is on the, on the roller or the brush, it goes everywhere that it exists in the painting or in the composition. And just literally place all of these colours one next to another, and if you put the right places and the right shapes relevant one to another, uh, then this whole painting should just appear out of the ether, if you like. It should just uh, turn into people and into uh, shop windows and so on. Let's see how we can do with that then for a bit of Well, the drawing's done, and we're ready to go ahead now. Uh, just working out whether I should bother using sponge rollers or not, or just go straight in with brushes. It might be rather fun uh, just to use brushes this time, because there's so many colours, there's so many individual pieces here that require uh, facets of, of, of light, that I might just work with a three-quarter inch um, flat at first, and see where we go. I still want to work from my medium tones down to my dark, so I'm going to start off with uh, some of these lovely warm and cools straight away and just get underpainting done. Um, now when you've got a colour on your brush with this style, I'm using what I call my jigsaw method. Um, in other words, I'm um, placing the right colours in the right shapes, in the right places, relevant one to another. 
That's what I'm trying to do anyway. Um, and that way I don't have to think about what the objects really are. I won't be, be distracted by that. Um, all I've got to do is get all of these right in their relevance and um, the painting should just appear, it should just metamorphosize from a drawing into shapes and shapes and more shapes and gradually those shapes will appear to, as I say, metamorphosize to turn into um, objects that are recognizable. At the moment it's just going to be a series of abstract lines, shapes. I'm painting fairly impasto a la primer directly onto the canvas. Uh, no, no, no ground at all this time. Just want to, as rapidly as I can, get rid of all of the white canvas with the basic colours. So say this is a mid-tone and work my way down to my darks gradually. You see the beauty of the flats is that we can do larger areas like that or I can do finer areas with the edge of the brush like this. And the idea is to use the colour that's on the brush wherever it is to actually uh, fill in the shapes like a jigsaw, which is why I call it my jigsaw method, because I'm using the flat of the brush now to use this method and just build these shapes up one to another and everything will just appear, I hope. I'm going to put a lighter, stronger red on later. This is um, a dark magenta. Uh, Some lovely light magentas. As magenta is a colour you can't do without. Remember, if you want to make a purple, you have to have magenta and cyan, or magenta and turquoise, or even cerulean will do. Um, there's going to be subtle differences. I mean, for instance, what I'm, what I'm doing now, this really needs to be a Burns the end rather than the magenta, but all in good time. There's a lot of this red going through it, and so I'm going to put the lighter cadmium warmer red over it later. At the moment, just this cooler red. Remembering, if you haven't seen my films before, that every single colour has a warm and a cool, and that is called the colour hues. Remember this guy hue? Every single, even a yellow. For instance, if I take lemon yellow and chrome yellow, chrome yellow is a much more orangey yellow and anything to do with fire is warmer, as in red, and anything to do with ice, water is cooler, as in blue, so lemon yellow is a much bluer yellow than that should be a little bit higher that mark I've left there on the drawing. Um, if we put one against the other, and now this is where the opposites come in because in our armory to paint of different arrowheads or strings for the bow or whatever you wish to call it, we have rough next to smooth in the opposites, light next to dark and cool next to warm. And we need to play these opposites as well as the complementary colours on the colour cycle. Because we can make things work far stronger and with more effect by using these opposites together. So if I want to make something much warmer, I don't have to keep putting warmer colours on. I can in fact 
um, do it by putting opposites. To make something else seem warmer, I can make something cooler next to it, or darker next to a light, and so on. And that way, enhance them. I'm pushing the paint in a little bit now, it's a little bit thinner, so that I can just see my drawing underneath, but I'm going to be using slabs of paint as well. So I'm going to go back over this and really lather on some lovely thick slabs of I want to see my brushwork, I want to actually feel this paint impasto coming across here. Nice big slabs of paint. This is the beauty of the heavy body acrylics. I'm using heavy body acrylics here, not the ordinary standard fine ones, because I want, I enjoy the, the effect of heavier paint like uh, oil paint and that I can get by using this and still have all the advantages of using acrylics. So everywhere where there's going to be red, or this particular red, I'm painting it in at the moment. And I don't need a smaller brush yet. In painting we normally and to every rule that is an opposite, we normally um, paint with our large brushes first and then go smaller and smaller. And in this technique also, I'm doing my loose painting at first, my loose style, or fairly loose, even though I'm painting fairly accurately into these shapes, and I will gradually tighten up. We can start loose, but we can't start tight and finish loose, which has to be the other way around. You need to start loose and finish tight. And the drawing needs to be a reasonable drawing also. You can't start with a bad drawing and work loosely into it, because what you'll find is you tend to enhance the bad bits of the drawing. Bad, bad, bad. You tend to enhance the bad bits of the drawing um, and it starts to look ridiculous. Uh, just Judy would say, ridiculous! She's quite a character, isn't she? I'm going to mutter away to you doing this painting of my thoughts as we uh, waste away these. This is a Monday and I go into surgery on the Wednesday, so I'm keeping my mind occupied and off things <laughs> doing this. Let's really enjoy what days we have. I don't want to waste a moment. I've always tried to live my life to the full because you never know what's around the corner. And I can honestly say that I've used my 70 years to the best of my ability to make the most of it, to enjoy, to share. Here I have to decide, now on this strip there's a yellow band with little red stripes in it. So I have to decide whether I'm going to put the <laughs> red over the yellow in bands or the yellow over the red. And I've decided in this case I'm going to put the red over the yellow, it's going to be easier later on. Just get some of these shapes established. It looks very complicated, but again, if we just put these right shapes in the right places, it should all work. A little bit thinner now, just here while I feel these shapes. The whole series is smaller and larger there. I've got places where there's more texture as well. I mean, for instance, this tablecloth here um, has both. It's a checkered red and yellow, so I'm going to put the red in first on here and come back with the yellow, in this case, on this one. Because it's going to be multi-coloured. Each uh, of the checkered areas is going to change as um, the light goes around it. And the striped t-shirt he's wearing, um, I'm going to have to do that by painting base colours on first. But then picking up the Uh, stripes afterwards, again with the correct colours. Right, 
and so I want to go downwards and upwards. So I've got to go downwards to my darker and upwards to my lighter. I need to put out a bit more cadmium red. Now this is the much warmer red I was talking about. A much, much brighter orangey red. And I'm going to need to just touch orange and a bit of yellow into that just to give the feeling of these lovely colours in this. Really push these colours today. Really enjoy. Because here we are on a nasty, boring winter's day, grey outside. I'm supposed to be isolating. <coughs> Doesn't look much brighter this red, but it is. And the whole of his face has to be done the same. I'm going to bring some alizarin crimson down in a minute, which will be much more purple. And there, uh, and in those few strokes, you see the difference they can make. I'm going to put a warmer colour coming down there. I don't know if you can tell, hopefully you can see these colour differences as much as I'm working on them now. Next we're going to go towards the oranges and start to take some cadmium orange and really work on that in here. Well, I'm going towards the lighter colours there. I want to go down to my darkers next as well, in, in fact. You see how I want this lovely dip yellow there. But I do want to keep using nice thick heavy opaque paint in simple strokes. I want to try and make everything happen with very simple individual marks if I can. Now just starting to find his face there, look. And I'm going to paint the light over that darker hue just to pick up you know, with the shoulder here a bit. And then where else is the orange? Right, well, we're going to come up to here now. And wherever it is, from now on, this orange goes in. And you start to see forms just starting to appear now. And you see how we can use this jigsaw method. Just blocking in these shapes. <laughs> Somebody said last night, do you mean printing by numbers, Pete? I said, well, actually, yes, a bit. We've drawn it out carefully. Now we're just going to fill the numbers in. <laughs> so a little bit like that, yes. Isn't it lovely, though, to use pure colour? Uh, it's uh, refreshing. Almost like a a metal structure as we a building, isn't it? Over the girl's head. This young lady here reminds me so much of my younger daughter. She's a specialist paediatrician um, down south in Brighton. Doing very well, two boys, and her husband is a anaesthetist, specialist again, both doing very well, which is pleasing, and I love them all dearly. But I don't see much of them. Long way away, and I've been in France for a long time in summers, but they did come and see me a couple of years ago over then. Very much enjoyed it, and just as they start to do that, what happens? Brexit comes along. You know my feelings on that, I'm sure. Absolutely devastating for the country, for the people. And I'm sure that many people now would uh, not have voted that way. Now they can see the problems it's caused and all that's going to be lost. That's all very well, these politicians misleading people for their own selfish ends. There's things against it, yes. But I mean, look at what the fishermen have got out of it. After all of that, they were totally misled. You can see it coming, but... Oh dear, what can I say? Now, leave that for the moment then, and we'll just come back to this. I enjoy painting, I'm not get too involved. I don't want to get involved in politics or religion, because it affects us. You think back that you hear all the major wars and strife in the world have been because of politics.
Netflix and religion. Basically, and greed. I'm not saying politics and greed go together, but <clears throat> shall I say, clearing my throat. I'm just doing some underpainting here now. I know I'm going to do many more colours here, but I need to lose this white in order to paint the other colours over the top and have it glowing through. So I'm just using this orange and it's come a bit more red since I've been plastering it on and linking it with the reds. There we go. But I don't want any white, horrible, fluffy canvas, snowy canvas showing through. Oh, I want to do these finer lines later. I just establish some of these lighter areas so that I know where things are. It looks a very lovely abstract piece, which, you know, painting this way, you, you never know what you're going to end up with. Don't always just go on to complete a painting without stopping and standing back and looking because quite often we can be doing something very, very interesting that stands on its own. It doesn't, uh, doesn't need continuing further even. It's not fun this way, but you can see my point about taking on complicated things and simplifying them this way. Again, I need to block in these colours here um, so that I can put other tones over the top just to have an underpainting. I'm varying the reds and oranges as I go along. <laughs> Sometimes it would be nice to have four or five hands if the brain could handle it. Paint a few places at once. Hmm? But just indicating things as well. We're not going to painting solid details yet. Just indicating everywhere where this colour is then. So they seem a bit separate. People you know, tend to like to finish a part before um, moving on and make something appear to be something. But this way, you've just got to trust in your drawing and you've got it right. And uh, everything should just come together later. Oh, I almost done my orange, I think, not far off. I'm going to put it over some of the areas where the yellow is going to go as well. Big painting. But you can handle a small one in exactly the same way. It'll be even faster. Smaller brushes possibly, but still use the largest brushes you can to... So now I've got choices to make here because I've got stripes. And where I've got stripes I'm going to have to consider An underpainting colour first of all. Okay now we're going to gradually start going darker and uh, I'm going to take some uh, a little crimson. See how warm that is. Not as warm as my Bounciana is going to be later here. I'm going to use Bounciana here as well. Down here. This lovely... I need to make this paint a bit thicker because it's, it's going on a bit slimily. The paints I'm using here are Specialist Crafts um, Heavy Body times. But they're a very, very good price. Best paints I can find for that price on the market. Tried the SAA and so on and they just can't get cheaper acrylics. So. They said to me they couldn't get them, so that was, they forced you to go elsewhere if they can't. I get my varnish from the SAA. I use the Cobra water-based varnish, which is a very effective and reasonably priced aerosol spray. So that's worth bearing in mind, perhaps, to give them business if I can. Um, but right the way across there, because I need to go in there with some of the darks and bring these shapes out by cutting around the lights with the darks later. You can, I mean, with a paint that's semi-opaque like this, 
because it's got a semi-translucent semi feel to it. Um, we can use it a bit thinner over white canvas to give a lightness. Now that is especially useful when you're dealing with something like <coughs> yellow flowers where you want a really bright strong yellow and if you put that over a dark they go darker and it's hard to get them to enhance with being slightly transparent so uh, if you want a really bright yellow then painting them over a white canvas to start with not putting a ground on will give you a much stronger lovely yellow just get this basic coat on here and I can darken it in a minute with purples and so on I just want to get the little, I need to lose the white at the moment to really see what I'm doing I'll just use the paint thinly here I'm going to go, I'm going to go darker over that later but I just want to lose this white how much paint there is to really slab onto here first of all to, to lose the white canvas takes a fair amount and then when we've got all of this covered that's when we can really start to tighten up and we've been loose we can come back in with the colours and really make sure we've got the right colours in the right places I've just painted over something I didn't need to paint over that I'll put some yellow over that later I'm just starting, just starting to make sense to you I hope which, um, I would have said Elizabeth was quite a cool red in a way because it, it goes towards the purple, the blue, but it actually compared to these reds that are on here, it, it's quite warm. So much paint being used at the moment, but it's lovely. I need to use this up because it's going a bit solid. and it's, I prefer it that way actually because uh, if it's a heavier paint then it's much nicer to use. I'm just going to drag some colour over now. I'm still using the paint in pasto, but I'm actually just dragging the paint across the previous coat, which isn't quite dry yet, to get these effects I want. A bit bluer in there. A touch of blue going into my paint now, just to cool that alizarin a bit more. And again, hinting at the background shapes here, just making them up. Very complicated painting, but we're simplifying it this way. Just go for these girls in the background and again simplify. Simplify the shapes all the time. That's going to be much more purple later. Just, just at the moment, just to get these basic colours in. A bit of red there I've missed. It's easy to miss part, but at least we can go back in and put them in when we need. Like I say, as I do this, things will just start to appear. We'll start to see tables and legs of tables and legs of people and everything will start to come together. Look at this now. Is I've got the colours as I want, but I'm also doing some underpainting because I'm going to put the darker colours on top of this. And then we can thicken up these darks if we need by putting a second coat on. As I was saying earlier, well, it's not quite strong enough, and I don't want to do it a bit stronger. I'll go over with a second coat. We're going to start to see forms appearing now. And I'm going to be using warmer rounds than this. It seems like a burnt sienna, but it isn't. It's uh, it is an alizarin crimson. I'll be putting some bounce here and on in just a moment to show you the differences. You can see I'm pushing in roughly because I'm going to put a slab another colour across that, which is far stronger. This is just base coats. Same here. All these seemingly complicated things just starting to simplify them down. And the deep blue I'm going to put in there is going to bring that shape out later. Again, using texture to, with the brush to, to make an illusion of 
pattern and it's amazing how much of one colour can be going on. And there's a lot more blues going on down into this as well later. Purples and blues just to establish our first underpainting at the moment. To put a bit of purple into it, just a little bit. A bit darker just here when I'm coming around this girl's hair. Just want to indicate things going on behind here. Just do a, a thin layer of paint there just to establish before I put the lights back in later. And all of this needs to. I think I'll just do a wash there. So I'm going to take the same paint and just put a wash over this to lose the white canvas and just give me a colour glowing through so I can see where I am. We're just starting now to see the shapes working one against another, which is obviously what we need. Again, I've got stripes going on over here later, so I just want to lose the, the white canvas. And I don't want any of this snowy canvas texture showing through either. Right, let's go down to the next um, browny or yellow ochre colour here. Take some yellow ochre, in fact, and add just a little bit of green to that. Let's see what we get with that, it's not far out. And again, wherever it is, we need to use it. So a yellow ochre and a wee touch of emerald. Just mixing up a nice even mix. And we put them in the right shapes and hopefully everything will just start to appear. Unusual colour, isn't it? But it's one of the things I like about computer enhancement is that it sometimes brings out colours and has you using them that you you wouldn't have looked for otherwise. And uh, and then you can use that later when you're painting to remember when you're actually out in plein air. Um, And a very complicated looking painting suddenly starts to become a bit more manageable, doesn't it? And you, when it's on your brush, whatever it is, you need to be using it. These greens are coming in here. So we're sort of just, in, just hinting at things. Let's not try and paint all the details. I just want to hint at them at the moment. Even little shapes are happening on here. Patterns and we start now. So we're just starting to even touch on a few details very, very loosely. Starting loose, going tighter and tighter. There's so many colours and so much to do. But uh, if we lose the white canvas first, then at least I'll be able to gradually put these smaller areas in. Get these lovely violets sing through that background nice and heavily, nice thick, bold pieces of colour. If you put it, if you mean it, say it. If you, if you love it, do it. Nothing to, nice big slabs of it across here. Be bold, make your brush strokes enjoyable for others to see as well. Make it come alive here. A vibration of colour. And I've mentioned this before too, but you know, it's, it's, the painting is so close to music. So close. The, the bass tones, the, the cymbals, the, all so close to different textures in the music. As I say, as I do it, I do apologise to keep saying as I say, um, as 
As I do this, you'll see things starting to appear. I hope you will. Right colours, right shapes, right places. Let me go on about it, but it is what's happening. It's got a lot greener, deep, deeper blue, I mean, here shortly. Let's get to Just about lost the white, so we can uh, come back with colours over the top and see where our light and darks are more in a minute. Just put the washes over here to do the same and lose all of the white now. Gee, how loose we can turn a big painting like this out. I want to go down towards my dark, so I'm going to go down to some Prussian blue now. Really start to work into these dark areas here. And hopefully, suddenly, the painting starts to appear. It just starts to now. Time! Right, that's my picky. Okay. Moving on now to what colour? Possibly, we're going to move on to a black in the blue. Black in the blue. Not too much sun today, so I haven't got that coming from the back of the canvas, which is very distracting when you're trying to paint. As you saw at the beginning of this film, what can happen when you try and put another canvas behind and it fell off onto my head? There we go, these things happen. So I've gone down from our medium tones to our darks now, <coughs> and I'll be coming back from these darks and working from my mediums up to my lights next. You see the whole thing now just really starting to pull together into a painting. saying much because there hasn't been much to say. It's uh, just a matter of working all of these lights and darks up in the right places and the right shapes and the right relevance. And I've had a student here in between as well who's needed a little bit of help. And all of a sudden there we are. You see what I mean about it taking shape and <coughs> I'm now going to go back up few more darks in it, but now I'm going to go back up towards the, the light colours from the mid-tones to the lights and really start to pull this thing out. Alright, now it's time to work up some of the deeper greens, which I haven't been doing yet. Some lovely deep colours going on in here. It isn't until we get all the full use of the colours one to another this will really work. You should obviously understand how the colours work so we can get this far, have them working as far as we have. The pump it's going to be when I come to put in all the uh, very light colours. strokes of colour, it's really enjoy. I'm 
and then we can work our way into the very light mauves and the various blues we haven't even touched yet. Check some of this lovely. A few nice strokes, these lovely strokes of paint that a few marks should say so much. See, we start to work the lighter colours up now as well. And now we can start to really see and separate out these beautiful colours that are happening under here. So I'm going to have to <coughs> work up things like this face a lot more clearly and succinctly, but I need to go out now, I think, and come back to this a bit later. We just put a couple of bits of light in just to show you how it's going to work. As, it, uh, as we put these lighter colours on, it will suddenly come to life. I suppose I need even that one bit of light there. And up here, places like this. Just coming down this side here. And once all of these highlights go in, aren't things going to change as you can now begin to see? Going to play against the other colours later. Just get his hair coming in. I just want to do a bit of this just to show you before I, I stop today. Nice. Slabs of colour going on around here. Bring this yellow all the way down. Just feeding the t-shirt around, the lights around here. Like this. And lighter like this, you see, and we can really start to make this come alive. light comes, it will suddenly really bring out the colours. As you can see what I'm doing here a little bit, even on this small bit, gives you an idea how it can be.
I'm going to leave it at that for the moment, come back to it tomorrow. Well, another day we can work on with it. I want to work on this area next and start to neaten things up. You see what I mean about the yellow paint there, how it goes so much thinner. Uh, no matter how you plaster it on, it's still it's the one colour. Even in oils it tends to be a bit thin. So I need to get more paint onto this, slab more paint on yet to get the colours I really want. I'm going to have to give it several coats I can see. Some nice bits. You can see how it works when um, the white under, uh, under painting comes through, the ground comes through. With the yellows it would have been uh, the same, so I need to work all of these up more. I'm going to go down a, a brush size and I'm going to come down to a half inch now I think. Maybe need to go smaller than that yet, I think we'll see. Now let's get these colours really well worked out. We've got a little bit of green coming across a hair here. These colours are still a bit thin. As I say, they're heavy body paints, but even so, they're only just working on this. Top of the glass, just feeling the top of the glass here. And down through here and into there. A bit of white in a minute to get out. To use a smaller brush, we just need details in some of the places, some of the faces, and this is one of them. Just take a little bit of purple and uh, we'll have a look at that little bit of the face there. That's a little bit of work to bring out the. Uh, Take some emerald and really make it almost just off white. I may have to put a little bit of yellow into that yet. Let's just see. Uh, yes, a little bit more green in it and a little touch of yellow. You see the difference that makes against the pink. Totally what you expect. Not sure if that pink is quite orange enough. Don't want to fiddle too much, but we've just got to get these right colours. They have to be absolutely right. much it just it really does need to be a couple of brush strokes to get it right and this isn't quite doing it. It's almost there but almost is not good enough.
it's almost time to take another break. I'll be just a moment. So I'll come across here a bit more with these. Again, I look into pure colour, it's tempting to, to move to glazes, but I mustn't do that. Still not quite happy with this area, these areas through here, so I think that I need to work on, on these a bit somehow. I'm not quite sure what it is that's wrong with them yet, but I hope I'll get there in a minute. I feel we're almost, almost there. Suddenly, this has, these things usually happen quite quickly when they're going to. mixture of these colours. I'm taking some flash pink, some um, opera rose here with a little bit of my grey blue just to see if I can pick out. I might need it here. Anything I do now is adding, hopefully adding to it, not subtracting from it. So. these last from loose to tight areas that we're building up now. Well I think yeah suddenly I think I'm that's all I can do. Well I think I've taken this one as far as I want to go. Nice, loose, big, lively, bright piece. No sponge rollers this time, just the flat brushes. <laughs> 